for React Native Developers, what is going on. In this episode, we take all of our learnings regarding the pitch gesture handler and advanced studio transformations in order to build an incredible example. So welcome to Can It Be Done in React Native. This week, we go through our photos with style. Hello guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. In this week's episode, we are looking at the WhatsApp photo gallery and we can swipe between pictures and we can zoom in one picture, move it around. And when I release the gestures, there's some nice momentum to the movement. And then if I reach one, the boundary of the photo, I can go from one picture to the other. Completely seamless, incredible user experience. In fact, it is so intuitive, it is so well done that it's hard to imagine that it would be hard to do programmatically because it feels the flow is so natural and it, it's so intuitive that you would think that it's actually like very easy to implement because it's just, yeah, feels so natural. Incredible user experience. So, for us to get more information on how this could be done, there are a couple of uh, interesting things to notice on, the, on this user experience. So first here, so I have the, just a picture at regular size. Here, it's a small thing, but it doesn't matter how strong is my swipe. So you cannot see my finger, but here I'm swiping very strong, very, very fast. I cannot jump from more than one image. I can only go to the previous image or the next one. And now if I, let's say, zoom in, so okay, I can zoom in, move the picture around. Here again, I'm within the image. So the image is bigger than the size of my screen. It doesn't matter how strong I can swipe in one direction or the other. I won't be able to, you see that just happened, I won't be able to go from one image to the other. I will only be able to pan within the image. If the boundaries of the image matches the boundaries of the screen, so here you see on the left side, the boundary are touching, now I can swipe from one image to the other. So here, let's say if I move to the left of only a few pixels, only you see like just some few pixels, here, because the boundary is not touching, I can swipe like crazy to the right. It won't go to the next picture. You can try, you see like this. But now the boundary is touching, I can swipe. So this will help us to build the different states of our gestures and animations. So when I first saw this example, I got really excited for two reasons. First, in the Can It Be Done React Native series, we often try to find the right primitives in React Native in order for us to implement uh, great user experiences. Do we have a SVG animation primitive? Do we have a Bezier curve animation primitive? Do we have a masks view primitive? It's all about looking at an example, looking at our React Native gestures and animation tool belt, find the right primitives to use in order to build the example. Here, it's a bit different because we know that we have the primitives. We have the pin gesture handler. We have the declarative language on the UI thread. We have everything we need in order to implement this example. That's not where the complexity is. The complexity here comes from the fact that the different states that are applied to this user interaction are extremely complex. And it's about us keeping our heads cold and being able to uh, go through such an example and implement each gesture and animation state properly. So, and I find it to be super exciting because the delivery, the end user experience is absolutely incredible. The second reason I got really excited is that this is one of the first complex gesture and animation example I looked at as a React Native developer that was uh, one and a half year ago. 
And I was so overwhelmed by this example. I, I really had no idea what was going on, reached for help on Twitter. And that's the first time I got in touch with Christophe Maguera. Christophe Maguera, father of gestures and animations in React Native and co-founder of React Native on Android, was kind enough to help me research this example. And we first, for the first time, I had the opportunity to end up in a Google Hangout with Christophe Maguera. I remember I was so nervous uh, being in the same Google Hangout than him, and he was couldn't have been. Uh, nicer. So we looked at this example. It was a little bit uh, too much for me to chew, to chew at the time, and I decided to leave it aside. Now we are a bit more advanced with these gestures and animation techniques, and I felt like it was time to look again at such an example and to see uh, if it can be done knowing what we know now. How would we do this in React Native? So we have our swiper component, which we actually built in a previous video. And each picture has its own pinch gesture handler. And when we move from one picture to the other, we know what is the index of the active picture so that we know if the pinch gesture is active or not, the translation from the pan gesture handler that we use to move the image will only be applied to the active image. So the pinch to zoom feature, we know how to do this. When the pitch begins, the focal value of the pin gesture handler is the transformation of the, the origin of the scale transformation. When the pin gesture is active, the focal value is used to move the image around. We need to subtract the value at begin for this to make sense. So begin sets origin of transformation and any extra value from begin would be the translation of the image. When we end the gesture, we've done this in a previous video, we keep in offset values the transformation. So the origin, scale, and translation. Now we give, so we have the pan gesture handler in the swiper, we give the translation x value to the pin gesture handler. When the pan gesture handler is active, we use it to move the image around. If the image, the boundary of the image touches the boundaries of the screen on the right or left side, we translate up to the boundaries and we send the remaining x value back to the swiper because these remaining x values will be used to move from one image to the other. So we send translation x to the pin gesture to the pin gesture component. It's using the value to move the image around. If it doesn't need to move the image more because it's on the uh, left or right boundary, it sends back the remaining pixels that have been translated so that we can do the uh, swiper. When we go from one image to the other, we reset the state of the translation, scale, all the, so the, all the animation state is reset. And when the pan ends, we add a decay animation. So exactly like we've seen in the WhatsApp example. So just using a decay animation from reanimated. Some of the considerations we looked at on the WhatsApp example so we cannot swipe from, this one is kind of uh, obvious. We cannot swipe to more than one picture. So only the next one or the previous one. And if we are within zoomed in the picture, it doesn't matter how strong is the uh, momentum. We cannot swipe from one picture to the other. We will only swipe within the picture. And when we change the active picture, we reset the state. And how to calculate the boundaries of the image is actually a very simple formula. We take the size of the image, which is its width times its scale. We remove the width, so the width of the screen. So this is width times scale minus one. And then that, so for instance, if I have it zoomed in like this, 
So scale minus one times width gives us here what we have on the left side and right side. And we divide it by two for each side. And if it's on the left side, it's going to be a minus. If it's on the right side, it's going to be a plus. So this is how we're going to calculate the boundaries. So this is our plan. Hopefully, we can execute it well. But what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. Guys, before we get started, this is going to be a complex user interaction with a lot of complex gestures and animation states. If you're interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I recommend that you check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences that will run like CC, FPS, even on low-end devices. After following this curriculum, the recipes we tackle in the Can It Be Known React Native series should feel trivial. You should have all the fundamentals that you can put together in order to build these incredible user experiences that we are looking at in this series. So if you're interested, I hope that you check it out at startreactnative.dev. All right, guys, let's get started. This should be quite <laughs> the ride. Here we have the boilerplate project, which you can download from the video description in case you want to follow along with this example. And this boilerplate project contains two components that we already built in previous videos. There is the swiper component that you see here, where we can swipe from one image to the other. And there is a pinch to zoom component where we keep when the release, when the gesture is released, we keep the state of the transformation. So we can apply multiple pinch gesture to the image. And here we can swipe. So we have our swiper here. We show the image in the image viewer component, which is the pinch gesture handler with the three states. State be pinch begin the focal. So we adjusted focal is the focal value from the pinch gesture handler, but we modified the origin of transformation to be top left. So we um, removed the minus with divided by this. Ah, minus with divided by two, uh, height divided by two. Pinch is active. The focal, so adjusted focal becomes the translation of the pinch gesture. But of course, we need to remove the origin from this value. When the gesture ends, we keep. So the transformation is a translation plus a scale. We keep the offset value of the translation and of the scale. And we here reset the focal and translation value. So here scale is also scale offset times gesture scale. So both here for translation, we have offset plus translation. For scale, we have offset times scale. So we are going to start our example and I will link to the appropriate uh, videos in the video description. So let's start with our swiper. The first thing I would like to do quickly is that here, if I, you see, if I swipe very strong, I can jump to more than one image. So here we have the list of all possible snap points. And so this is why here we can swipe to more than one image because we give as potential snap points uh, all the snap points possible. So uh, if we are strong enough, we can go till the end in one gesture till the end of the uh, gallery. So what we want to do is to clamp this value. And the mean is going to be, we're going to multiply, so minus width. Um, so we're going to subtract index minus one. So that's going to be actually the max value if we subtract one to index. 
and the mean value is going to be the same, but with add. So if we add one times minus with, it's the smallest value, and this one is the maximum value. So let me import. Clamp. from Redash. We have some errors. Okay. So now I'm here, I'm swiping super strong, but I can only go either back to the same previous or next. Perfect. Now we're going to pass the values of the pan gesture handler to the image viewer. So we know how to translate within the picture when it's zoomed. So let's uh, declare it here. So we need the state of the pan gesture handler. The pan state is animated node of state from React Native gesture handler. We need the pan translation which is a vector. We need the pan velocity, which is also a vector. And we need to know if the image is active. Is active is an animated node that is zero or one. Vector we import from Redash. And finally, we need and swipe X animated value. So what is this swipe X animated value? If we are the active image, if is active is true, we receive the translation vector from the pan gesture handler directly. We use this value to move within the image. We clamp the value to the mean and max. So the clamping formula is quite simple. We've seen it previously. We're going to redo it. Any extra pixels left, we're going to assign it to swipe X. And swipe X is going to be used to do the swiping. So let's send here these values. So is active. is active is um, index equals the index of the image. Here I can call it i. Pan translation. Here it's called translation. Pan velocity. Velocity. Swipe x. So we're going to assign translate x. So we're going to need an intermediary value, which we're going to call translation x. So swipe. Do we are we missing something? Pan state, yes. So now we don't use translation directly because we are only gonna use so i'm going to call it translation x we're only going to use translate tra oh yeah, exactly so we this is our translation so now this component ignores what the pan gesture and handler is doing and only receives the value which are leftovers from the pin gesture handler. so this becomes translation hex here and everything else looks good here we swipe, we look at the swipe if the gesture ends, but only the gesture ends and we are at boundaries. Because if the gesture ends and we're still within, uh, you know, moving around within the picture, we know that there is no swiping to be done. And this is why on the WhatsApp example, if you are within the picture, even if you swipe super strongly, you're not going to be able to go from one picture to the other, only when one of the boundaries of the image touches, 
touches the boundary of the screen. So here we're going to add a condition, which should be if translation x is not equal at zero. So if translation x is not equal at zero, it means we have some boundaries and we can swipe. Uh, translation X, yeah, perfect. So here we should be good, but now of course, so I cannot swipe anymore, right? Because we are not writing the value anymore. So let's do that. And we are gonna start with computing the mean and max vectors for the picture. So the mean vector is, as we said, it's with of the screen minus, times scale minus one divided by two and plus minus for the mean and max value. So the mean value is, we are gonna do a vector multiplication of, so half, so minus zero five of the width, so the width height, sorry, so the Canva vector. Canva is defined as a vector x is width and y is height. So half times we are gonna remove scale minus one. And this is why here you see here we do add offset plus translation and here scale is sent directly. So we don't have to do multiply gesture scale times scale offset every time. So this is why here we use scale offset direct scale value directly. So this is our mean vector and this is our max vector. Max vector is the opposite value. So we're going to do vector minus. So we times minus one of mean vec. So I like that the boundaries are actually so simple to compute. But this comes with a trade-off because now if we want to clamp, so if we want, so these are the boundaries, but for the whole transformation, not only the translation, but also the offset translation because also here we use the scale. So what we need to do is that we're going to use clamp and it's going to be offset plus translation, a uh, pan translation, sorry. So plus pan translation. I'm not importing this value, am I? So we need to import all of these guys. Pan state, pan translation, pan velocity is active. Swipe X, perfect. So we clamp mean vec max vec, but we need to remove offset to the value. So sub because we're interested of about the pan translation value. So we are remove offset. And so to do this add sub, I find it much easier because here these values are so easy mentally to compute. I think it's much easier than trying to calculate the clamping directly uh, for the pan gesture handler depending on the uh, scale and, uh, tra and transla translation offset. So here, the clamped value is super simple. So now let's use it. So if the image is active, is active, and the state of the, gest of the pan gesture is active, what do we do? Well, let me import this one. Well, um, we're going to assign to the translation vector. So vector set 
translation, we're going to assign the clamped value. Clamped. And then the remaining pixels are sub of translation, pan translation dot x minus clamped. And these, these expressions, this expression, so on x, sorry, is what we need to send back to the swiper. So we're going to do set swipe x of all the remaining pixels. So the pin gesture handler eats the pixels depending on the scale of the transformation to translate the image. And as soon as uh, it cannot translate anymore, gives back these pixels to the uh, uh, swiper so we can start swiping. But um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. So it's a bit, it's not working correctly. You can swipe. So here I have a stutter, I know why. We can fix it. Here is the I know exactly what is happening here. It's because here also we need to handle the offset value if the pan gesture handler ends as well. And if the pinch, so since now we are adding the pan gesture handler to the mix, so we need to write the same condition here for the pan gesture handler. But of course, we also need to do it only if the image is active. So if the image is active and the pan state equals end or undetermined, and the state of the pinch is also end or undetermined. And we have a syntax error here. So let's do some counting of parentheses. Oh my, oh my, um, I will be here, I guess. And so maybe I have one too much now. Let's see. And here we have a stutter on the translate X that you should be able to, I don't know, to swipe. Yeah, so you see this stutter, we can fix it here by simply writing on change. So we only write translate X when, uh, sorry, when translation X is changed, we want to write the translate X value. So this should take care of the stutter. So here we swipe, easy, I zoom in. So here we have no momentum, no decay. So when I release the gesture, it's a bit awkward. Stops abruptly, it's not fun. But you see, ah, 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 I'm reaching the boundary and I can swipe. It's pretty cool. So now let's add, make, let's make it uh, feel alive at some momentum, at some decay. And that's why we, we pass uh, um, the velocity vector as parameter, right? So we can have a nice decay. And um, so we're going to create an animation value called shoot decay. Default value is zero. So this shoot decay animation is going to have a very special uh, life cycle. And we need to do it in, so you see here, how do we do these animations? We create a clock. We have these helper functions from Redash. We start the animation, we pass the clock to detect when the animation is over. So here, timing, if the clock is not running anymore, because we know that timing starts the clock, it means the animation is over, so we can do something. So we're gonna need clocks also. So a vector of clocks, one for X, because we decay on the X and Y axis. So, but here the life cycle is gonna be a bit more complicated. Uh, so new clock, new clock. And 
and um, we okay so if the image is active and we just finished the pan gesture so the diff of pan state is not equal to zero. So the state of the pan gesture just changed and the state is end. So are you counting parentheses with me? That looks good, I guess. If the picture is active, state end is just finished. We could, um, I want to add for safety that the pin gesture handler is not active, but that should be, I think, fine. We should set sh uh, should decay to one. If we should decay. So if should decay. So what happens here, I have a special file with a decay function, which is a copy paste from the decay function in Redash with one change. So we have our state or config. At the beginning, the clock is not running. So we set the position, velocity, value in order for the animation to start, we run the animation, return the position. Usually what we're doing here, so the Redash implementation is the same, but if the animation is finished, we stop the clock. So here we could run the animation. If the clock has stopped, we say should decay equals false, and we are done. Here I'm not stopping the clock on purpose, because we run the animation on the X and Y axis. So one clock may finish before the other. So I'm never going to stop the clock. I'm just going to run the animation. So I have decay vector that simply runs the decay animation for X and Y. So we're going to set on the offset value, offset translation, which is a vector. So vector set, we're going to uh, runs the, so the decay decay vector on offset velocity so it's called pan velocity clock here so we run the animation and now if and because also we want to make sure that the decay animation doesn't loop itself right so, you know, if we were to stop the clock, then he thinks, okay, clock is not running, reset the animation and it will run over and over again. But now if the, just, the image is active and either the pan state is active or the pinch state is active, we need to stop the clock and set should decay to false. So, um, so if pan state is active or, sorry. Or state equals, like pinch state equals active. We need to stop the clock. Stop clock, clock X. Stop clock, clock Y and set should decay to zero. Let's have a look. I think one thing we want to do also is to reset the state of the pin gesture handler if we, the image is not active anymore, but let's have a look first at this example. Okay, so 
So I zoom in. The decay is pretty nice. You see also interruptible because we stop the clocks immediately. So that's perfect. And you see here I'm going to reach the boundaries and it's not working. What is happening? Something is buggy. Looks very strange. Um, out of safety, I would like to add the reset values to make sure. So if the image is not active, I want everything to be reset. So these values here. So offset is zero. Scale offset is one. Gesture scale is one. Uh, we can even add. And I'm not sure it's necessary, but should decay to zero. Do we have other values that we should reset? Translation, clock. I mean, we should stop the clocks as well. I don't think it's necessary, but never be too careful here. We really want to reset the whole state of the animation values. Okay. So the decay works well, but the boundaries are lost. So we end the gesture, the offset is set. Should decay, so if The gesture is active here. It's not state, but it's pan state. That I think might explain it. Let's have a look. Okay. Oops. So DK works great, but we are not touching the boundaries anymore. So is active. And here should I say is state. not state.active shouldn't make a difference should decay one stop clock is active if one of the two is active pan state or pinch state should be good what is happening Okay, move the picture around, pan, decay, but... Haha, I think I know. <laughs> think I know. Yes. Haha. Did you guys find out what's the mistake? Of course, we forgot to clamp the decay. We need to clamp this little guy to the min and max vector. And so that's why I love the way we calculated the min and max vector because the formula is so easy to compute. We can use it here, you see directly on offset. And for calculating swipe X and the translation here, we can simply remove offset. see here and what I love is that the boundaries are not touching here so if I swipe super strong I'm not going to be able to switch pictures here boundaries are touched I can swipe picture so let me do that again 
boundary is not touch, I cannot go to the next picture. Here, boundary is touch. Up, I swipe nicely. Isn't that cool? I. <laughs> It feels so intuitive, exactly like the WhatsApp example. I could play with this for hours. It's uh, it just feels great. And um, very natural, very smooth. And the state of the uh, pin gesture handler is reset every time we switch from one picture to the other. I can zoom in, go to a new picture, go back. Isn't that cool? What a conclusion of our series of videos on the pin gesture handler and advanced studio transformations. We learned how to harness the pin gesture handler in order to implement complex pinch to zoom features and to keep the state of the transformation of the image across different gestures. And we've learned how to build the swiper from one image to the other and to seamlessly integrate uh, this swiper with the pin gesture handler. The solution looks absolutely seamless and the user interaction is so intuitive. I hope you guys enjoyed this example. Let me know what you think in the comment below. I'm really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.